he uh, converted all the demons instead of killing them. So that's my favorite, Shloka 75, the second line. Sanyasa krich chama shanto nishta shanti parayana. Uh, what about you? What's your favorite? <laughs> There's something for everybody. <laughs> thousand different names. Any other questions? Peter says, I was reading today that chanting a thousand names of Vishnu equals Rama chanted three times and chanting Krishna once is equal to this. Yeah. So why do we chant this? For, to get, I'll be quite direct and frank, to get material benefits. The purpose of Vishnu Sahasranam is to give material benefits while at the same time cultivating devotion. And the reason we need this is because uh, we need resources. Also, we need protection from enemies. And uh, we have so many projects. We need knowledge. We need uh, all kinds of things in this material world to survive. And this is a very difficult time. So we're chanting primarily for protection. And I think we can all feel that we're getting a lot of protection. We're getting a lot of, uh, well, a lot of bliss, too. OK. So then my, my important announcement is that Krishna has given me a name for Bhakta Andres. Ah. Huh? It's okay? I'm ready. You ready? <laughs> yeah. He's ready. He's ready. Ananda Vardhana Das. <laughs> Ananda Vardhana. Yeah. I could never remember Andre anyway. It's like, uh, hey, um, uh, oh, Andre, right. Now, Ananda Vardhana means Krishna, who increases the bliss of his devotees. Yeah. Ananda Vardhana. You like that name? Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> no more. Now we all have to get used to it, right? Yeah. Ananda Vardhana. Actually, it's easier for me to think of than Andre, because I never could get used to Andre. That's not really your name, Andre. Huh? <laughs> but when it comes at the end. Oh, if it comes at the end. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny, you know, all the all the, the devotees that Prabhupada named something Ananda, mm -hmm. you know, they, they all were kind of impersonalist. Well, Jayananda was exceptional, I guess. Huh? Jayananda. Jayananda? Oh, Jayananda. I guess was. Yeah, but that's not a typical Ananda name either. Mm. You know? Jayananda? That, you know? Joy of victory. Huh? And, uh, but, you know, so many of the other Anandas, oh boy. Mm. Anyway, your Ananda Vardhana. Ananda. The increasing bliss. Okay. See? The Mayavadis. They get, even if they are successful and they get some impersonal realization, their bliss is fixed. They can't go beyond that point. They can't go beyond Brahman to Paramatma and Bhagavan because they're stuck. Uh, but the devotee's bliss is always increasing because Krishna's form becomes more and more attractive, actually. The more that we get to know Krishna, the more beautiful he gets. Uh, there's always this competition between the Devotees and Krishna. Oh, that cell phone's winding down. Um, Krishna is always very attractive. But then his devotees, 
because they're engaged in Krishna consciousness. Their service is also attractive. And then Krishna increases his attractiveness to increase the bliss of the devotees. And then their attractiveness increases. And then Krishna is more attracted. And so on and on it goes. So this is Ananda Vardhana. One of these, when you, I, I want to see when you realize what that name means. <laughs> it's going to be a fine day. Okay. Any more questions or discussion? No? No, that's it. Okay. Oh. More? Oh. 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 <laughs> it's a question from Peter. Peter? It says, the Mayavadis got attained Paramatma. They only they only stay at Brahman realization. Yeah, in fact, they don't even stay in Brahman realization. They fall down because they're offensive. If they were sincere, they would uh, advance from Brahman to Paramatma to Bhagavan, uh, because there's no lack of information about the personality of Godhead or about Paramatma and how he's expanded in everyone's heart. If they were really sincere, they could find him within their own heart. Huh? And there's so many temples, especially in India, where you can worship the personality of Godhead. But that's their defect is that they're offensive. They think the form of God is a product of Maya. That's why they're called Maya bodies. Body means one who accepts a certain philosophy or a certain uh, belief. Uh, so their belief is that the Supreme Lord, form of the Supreme Lord is Maya, illusion, some temporary product of the material energy. So they're called Maya bodies uh, because they follow that philosophy. So because of that, they're very offensive. Uh, that they want to take the Supreme Lord and, and uh, take away his personal form. But the devotees love the Lord's personal form. In fact, they're uh, so attracted by his personal form that they don't consider his impersonal form very important at all. Uh, so, uh, you know, there's a complete opposite point of view in the impersonalists, between the impersonalists and the devotees. Uh, the devotees just, that's all they want is Krishna's personal form. They don't care about anything else. As long as they have uh, association of Krishna's personal form, it's like, who cares, you know, <laughs> whether we're in, in the material or the spiritual world or we don't care where we are, what's going on, as long as we can be with Krishna. Uh, that's the way the devotees think. So, we're the... Uh, Ananda bodies. <laughs> Ananda Rupa. Krishna's form is called Ananda Rupa. That's not impersonal. <laughs> huh? question? Another question. Yes, question from Luciano. How important it is to turn your home into a temple? How advanced does one have to be to do this? Well, would you rather live in the material world or in the spiritual world? Huh? If you don't make your home a temple, then you're living in the material world. And if you make your home a temple, then you're living in the spiritual world. And how advanced you have to be? Well, you have to be advanced enough to understand the value of it and to want it. And then you need to research all the different ways and means and methods uh, how you keep everything very clean, first of all, and then you establish a nice altar in a prominent place in the house. Don't hide the altar in the back room. Put the altar right in the front <laughs> in a prominent place uh, so that everyone who comes can see the Lord. Uh, some nice pictures, some nice uh, dishware, you know, like a silver or a nice, at least a nice stainless steel uh, dishes to make offerings to the Lord and so on. And in that way, the, the more you uh, dedicate all your life and your energy and your abode and your work and everything to Krishna, the more Krishna will reciprocate and you can feel that. 
So it's like, how happy do you want to be? Uh, just a little happy or lots? Uh, so the more happy you want to be, the more you make your house a nice temple. Yes, but I need to steady myself. Well, how are you going to steady yourself if you're living in the material world? How are you going to steady yourself if everywhere you look you see Maya? How are you going to steady yourself unless you have some Krishna to hold on to? Huh? It's impossible. If you're, if you're uh, lost at sea and you're floating in the ocean and big waves are coming, how are you going to steady yourself? Huh? 